Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Thank you very much for clicking on today's video. My name is Sean, and here on this channel we talk about cross-stitching and sewing. For those of you who are returning, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for coming back. So we are very much in the middle of July or probably coming towards the end of July now and it's been quite a fun month with seeing everyone's projects that they have started for Jolly July. I wasn't too sure whether I'd be joining in and I did actually do a new start on a Christmas piece which I am so excited to talk to you about later. I haven't done as much stitching as I normally would do. It's just been so hot. I'm literally sitting here and I feel like I am melting. Uh, it's just been really, really hot here in the UK with temperatures up to 30 degrees, which for, for us here in the UK, that is really, really hot. We do really struggle. I would say 99% of our houses don't have air conditioning. So there's just no real escape from the heat when we have temperatures that high. So yeah, it's been really, really hot. So after a full day's worth of work sitting in really hot conditions, I've really not felt like doing much stitching. However, I do have quite a lot to show you today. So we do have a finish, which I'm really pleased about and I can't wait to show you. We have some finished for now um, pieces and we have some new starts. I have some haul to show you. I have quite a lot of fabric haul to show you. Um, and we also have some giveaways. So I mentioned in my last video that we'd reached 2000 subscribers, which is amazing. And I also reached a thousand um, followers on Instagram, which amazing. I just, yeah, it really is a picture moment. I never thought that I would have the, that amount of um, subscribers and followers. So thank you to every single one of you who um, follow me on either of the platforms. So yeah, I mentioned in my last video that I would be working on a giveaway. So we, we do have a giveaway today as well. We actually have two to celebrate the 2000 subscribers. So make sure to stay tuned for that. So I'm gonna get straight into this video because I think it might be another long one as they always are. So I don't wanna keep it too long. So let's just get straight into it. So the first one I wanna show you is my finish. I'm so pleased with how this has turned out. And that is my Through the Storm. And here it is. I made quite a lot of changes to this, as you will know, and this is how it's finished. Really pleased, so I'll just do a close up. So the sunshine over here I changed to weak Style Squash, I think it's called, and I did change the design a little bit. So there was supposed to be darkness in this cloud. I wasn't able to, to get the thread for that so I decided to add a few more of the drops and I just moved these ones over so they fitted well and the other changes I made was I did a black umbrella and I changed the flowers as well. I did post over on my Instagram about this bottom piece. I was really unsure of how I wanted to do the detail in here with the letters and the date and I decided to go for this look. So thank you for everybody who helped me with that. I was really unsure whether to put my maiden name first and Brett's initials um, and I was on an R in for a while and I decided to go with this way round because for me this is Brett and this is me. So then I like the idea of the names being in the same order as the swans. And I also thought that as we were standing at the um, altar, whatever you call it, um, he was standing on this side and I was standing on that side. So that's why I went with that in the end. So I'm going to frame this in a white frame. I did buy a frame, but I'm not too pleased with it. I don't think it's what I had in mind. So I am going to buy a white, another white frame, I think, for it. Um, it's either white or black, but I think white would look quite nice with this. But saying that, I think the black would also look nice because it would, it would probably make the umbrella pop. I don't know. 
I'm not sure yet but yeah I think I'm going to frame it and I'm just really pleased with how this turned out I think this is probably one of my favorite favorite pieces that I've done it was just a lot of fun I really like Silver Creek samplers I think they're a really great size well this one is anyway really good size I really like the writing as well I quite like stitching writing um, so yeah we have a finish so the details on this one which I didn't get out um, when did I actually start it because I think it was a start this year yeah so I started it on the 21st of January finished it on the 17th of July and I did this on 32 count pearl grey so yeah we have a finish which I'm really excited about okay so what is next so we have a few whips to show so the next one is frosty forest by country cottage needleworks i'll insert a picture of where i was last time i think i had done a little bit on part two it's not officially part two it's just my part two there are nine parts to the project and I just decided to just select whichever projects or whichever designs to start with and so yeah there's nine parts and I've now completed part two except for the snowman's eyes so this is where we are now and I've decided to keep the snowman's eyes and all the buttons anything that needed a french knot i'm gonna leave right until the end i think only because this is going to be quite a big piece and i don't know how long it's going to take me and i really would hate to do the knots and then them start to become untidy so i think it's a good idea to do them right at the end so this was the first one that i started with and this is the second one so that's now finished and I don't know where to go. I don't know whether to do the one here or go down. I think I might do this one here so then I have the middle row finished. But this colour, which is sea foam, is beautiful. I thoroughly enjoyed stitching with this colour as it's just so beautiful. And I haven't got the buttons yet. Jo over at Belize Stitches, she messaged me and she was like, Sean, Patchwork Rabbit have all the, have the full set in, in stock. And I just missed out by one of them being in stock. So then they only had the eight in stock of the buttons. So I did hold off from buying them because I do prefer to buy things when I know that I'm gonna be able to get the whole complete set. But I do actually like it without the buttons. So, if I can get hold of the buttons, I will, but I, I do quite like it without the buttons as well. So I wasn't too disheartened, but thank you so much, Joe, for messaging me. I really, really appreciate it. But yeah, I just missed out by one, one button. Um, so I'm sure they'll come back into stock. So yeah, if, uh, if anyone sees them back in stock, make sure to let me know. Cause I do, I do want to buy them, but like I said, I'm, I'm not too, yeah, I won't be too upset if I don't manage to get the buttons um, for the project. So that is Frosty Forest. I'm stitching this on 32 count pearl grey as well, which is the same one I did for this one. So it's the same, is it the same piece? No, it's not the same piece, it's a new piece. Um, I don't know when I will pull this one back out. I'm not sure whether to keep going and do a part each month um, and then it'll be done in nine months um, yeah I don't know not sure yet we'll see see what happens in the next couple of months whether I pull this one back out but I am thoroughly enjoying it it's just I really like the parts I like that I can stitch on a part and get it finished and you get that kind of finish feel um, yeah, so I really like I really like Country Cottage Needleworks. I love their love their designs as well. So that is the first whip that we stitched on. 
Uh, I'm also doing that as a little stitch along with Chloe over at the Penguin Cross Stitcher and the hashtag we are using is hashtag Frosty Forest Cell. So if you are also stitching it or want to stitch it or you've got it in your stash, then you can use that hashtag over on Instagram and um, yeah, join in the stitch along with myself and Chloe. So the next one I stitched on was the Swans by Lucares. And I'm stitching this as a kit. And I'll insert a picture of where I was last time. I want to put something behind this one. And here is where we are now. It's very creased, apologies. Now, <laughs> I started, I moved away from the little duckling and I can now say that the little duckling is finished. I then move to the mother's or father's, I always call it a mother but this one could be a father because I do have lovely mum as a duckling so maybe this one could be a dad. So yeah I moved to the face and then I decided that adding the eye to the face I feel is something I should do last. And so I decided to move back down here. So I added this section in since I last saw you and I'm now gonna move up to finish finish the face. I just feel like that is, that's just kind of how I like to stitch. I like to stitch that final kind of bit of a project that makes it become quite realistic and brings it to life. So yeah, I've now stitched this section and then I don't have that much to go. So this is going to be a focus piece, I think, for the next month. I'm so close to getting this finished now and I'm actually really enjoying it. I, I found that if I concentrate on it and focus on it, I really, really enjoy it. I think the problem that I've had is that I've picked it up here and there and not really given it the time um, whereas I think picking it up and putting a bit more progress into it, it's really starting to come together. So all of this side, I think, has been added and it's just looking beautiful. So yeah, really pleased with how that is coming along. And it's going to stay in my rotation until it is finished. So that is the swans. The next one is... Buttercup, which is the Buffy Threads Rendell Design Stitch Along that I'm hosting. And so here is the one that I am doing. Part two came out, or it didn't come out. Part two was um, the next step for us to complete this and that was released, wasn't even released. I talk about it like it's a stitch along that someone else is releasing as a design, but we all have the design, we all have the pattern. It is the next step. So we're now in part two. So that was on the 20th of July. So when this started, which was the 20th of June, this was the part one that I was doing. And then part two is going to be this section here, then part three, and then four, five, and six. So the stitch along is splitting your design into six parts. So then we have a finish at the end. And quite a lot of you have still been joining, which is great. And there is still time to join. Uh, so if you start if you start your project now, all you need to do is split it into five, five parts. So there is still time to take part if you want to. So I will insert a picture of where I was last time on the design. And I have now completed part one. I haven't started part two yet, but I have completed part one. So this is where we are. So if I put them together, you can see that the bottom, middle bottom section is now complete. It's actually bigger than I actually thought it was gonna be. I think I did mention that in my last video, that it is actually bigger than I thought it was gonna be. But it's really, it's really pretty and it's gonna be one of them which is gonna be really cute to go with my lovely mum design that I've already stitched. So 
that is that one. So part two, I am hoping to start either next week or the week after and hope to get that one finished before part three. So as part of the stitch along, I also do a shout out to some of you who are also taking part in the stitch along. And all I ask you to do is tag me in your post. So I know that you're happy for me to share over here with all of you guys. So there are actually gonna be two people I'm gonna be talking about today. So the first person I'm gonna talk about is George Dimple Chops. So I'll put her details along the screen now. She is doing uh, the project called New Beginnings Hedgehog, which is definitely on my wish list. And it's just adorable. I, oh, it's just so cute. So, so cute. I, I really like this one and I like the other hedgehog design as well. And I'm really not sure which one to do. So George is really making me want to stitch this version. Um, I actually rescued a hedgehog this week. I found her in the daylight, just sitting in the sunshine. And I managed to rescue her. We took, I took her to a hedgehog rescue for her to get, get checked over and gave her some water and um, food. And we, we basically saved her. So this design, when I saw George stitching this, very much reminds me of the little girl as well that I rescued this week. So every time I see George's project, I just think of the, the little hedgehog that I uh, saved. And it really makes me want to stitch it. So I thoroughly enjoy seeing your progress on this, George. Now, George also has a floss tube, which I am new to watching. She is on um, 38, so floss tube 38, and she has come back from a little break that she took from uh, YouTube. So I am really, really excited to go back and watch all of your um, floss tubes. And if you want to go and check her out, she is at Stitch Crafts with George. So yeah, definitely go and check George out. Okay, the next one is Sue, the selfish stitcher, and she is stitching, let me just get this right, no cause for a llama. Now this llama has the most beautiful red glasses with beautiful eyelashes. And one thing that I love about the post that Sue posted on Instagram is that she has bought matching a fabric to make a llama project bag. So I'll insert a picture of it. It is beautiful fabric, perfect for the design. And uh, I love it when people match their projects to their um, project bags or they get a matching um, needle binder. I just think it really just makes the kind of experience for you as a stitcher a lot more pleasing. So yeah, really enjoying seeing your uh, progress on that. It's so encouraging to see everybody um, taking part and um, making progress. So yeah, they are my two this month. And that is my update on my whips. They are all, that's all the stitching I've done. It's not as much as I would normally. Um, like I said, it's been really hot here in the UK. So I haven't felt as, um, haven't been picking up my projects as much, but that's okay, that's okay. Okay, let's move on to new starts. So. My new starts are, there's two, and they are both with one of my favorite designers, and that is Crocetta Gogo. I think that's how you say it. Some floss tubers say Crocetta Gogo. I think I've been saying Crocetta Gogo, but I think it's probably Crocetta Gogo. So the first one is a little free summer stitch along that they have released. And I'm not really a summer person. I am very much an autumn winter girl. But when I saw this, I was like, I'm going to have to stitch it, especially as the weather has been so, so hot. I really like the idea of stitching something summer. So I will try and insert a picture that doesn't release the whole stitch um, free chart. I know it's a free chart, but I really do like to encourage um, those of you who are interested to go and support and take it from the um, designer. So I'll try and insert a picture here if I can, as long as it doesn't give too much away. If um, it does, then you can go and um, check out Croquette, a, Croquette? Crocette Agogo's uh, Instagram um, page. I'll insert a, um, the link below so you can go and click on it. 
and I'm going to share with you my little start on this because it's super cute. This is what I have done. How cute is that? Oh, it's just adorable. What's it called? It's something to do with friends. Where's my notes gone? So it is called Two Friends by the Sea and it's 65 uh, stitches by 81 stitches. It is just adorable. How cute. So the only change I have done is I didn't have the lighter teal colour which is supposed to be in the goggles and the top bit here. So that's the only change I have done. And I'm stitching this on, um, I think it's called Vintage Stormy Sky. I think that's right. If it's not, I'll put it on the screen. And I'm doing this on 32 count linen, but look how cute that is. So they did this as a two part stitch along. So this side of, so this is a boat. So I just need to put, finish it out with the, the sunshine here. So this was part one and then part two is a cat also sitting in the boat. Oh, it's just adorable. Absolutely love it. So yeah, really enjoying this little little piece and it did has really made me realize I really like to stitch some little smalls I do have quite a lot of big projects and sometimes you don't always feel like picking up a big project you just want a little project and um, this shouldn't take me too long to finish so yeah really enjoying this one it's so so cute super cute so yeah if you want to stitch that then the link will be down below Okay, so the next piece was kindly gifted to me by Croquetta Go Go. Thank you so, so much. That was so, so kind of you to gift this to me. I saw it on Instagram and loved it instantly. And that is the Believe in Christmas. So it's a new release from Croquetta Go Go. I will insert a picture of what it looks like. And obviously with it being Jolly July, I was straight on it and made a start. So I am doing this on a 32 count linen and it's a silver speck. And this is where I'm up to. So just a tiny little start here in the bottom and you can really see that glittery fabric. Now I'm not 100% sure on this fabric. I love it, I think it's beautiful, but it is quite difficult to stitch on. So I'm just gonna see how I go and I would really like to, to finish this piece on this project, on this uh, fabric because it's beautiful. It's so glittery and it's just gorgeous. So yeah, I'm really, really hoping that I can just bear with and stitch this beautiful design on this beautiful fabric. It's so sparkly. It's so Christmassy. And I think this is the fabric that is called for, for the Glitter Village by Country Cottage Needleworks. And I love how that design turned out on that fabric. So I really hope that I can just bear with this fabric because this design is just needing a beautiful fabric to go along with the beautiful design. So that is my little start on that. I did buy this big 17 by 17 Q-snap um, for it as well as I'm not really a fan of the wooden um, frames. I do prefer a Q-snap. So just giving this a go, it is quite big. As you can see, I can't even get it in the frame. It is quite big, but it's perfect for these type of projects as this is quite a big um, piece. So the stitch size for this is uh, 211 by 171 and there's 13 colours. So there's not too many colours, um, but yeah, it is quite a big piece. So I wanted to get quite a big frame for it. So yeah, that is my start on that. Thank you so much for 
sending that across to me to to start I love it it's just Croquetta Gogo is just an amazing designer and I love all their pieces and I will link below their um, website so you can go and check them out okay let's move into haul as I have bought quite a lot of fabric these days so the first one is for a pattern and this fabric was bought from Sobery Online um, on Etsy and that is this beautiful snowman design which I just think is absolutely adorable and this is going to be used for this project which I think is perfect so I have been so tempted to start this project but I've managed to hold off because I'm trying to get a few more whips finished but I may cave but look how beautiful that fabric is oh it's just this little snowman with the birds it is just adorable I love it so to go with this fabric to go with this fabric and this design I have also purchase some fabric and that is this Paul Stitches Pearl and it's an opalescent fabric and I'm hoping, hoping you can see that okay, I'm hoping this fabric will show up the the white grey uh, thread but it's just absolutely gorgeous, I'm hoping you can see that opalescent because it's beautiful fabric so all these are just beautiful love 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 i think once i've made this bag i'm probably going to start it um so i'll just get the threads that go with the design so i'm hoping that they all pop on this fabric the only one i'm a bit concerned about is this color but I think there's enough grey in the thread that you'll be able to see it. So um, I'm really hoping that it all works together because it is gorgeous. So I bought this from their Etsy store. So they do have fabric that's just ready to ship. So I got this really, really quickly. Um, so yeah, it's always worth keeping an eye out for um, some fabrics that Pulse Stitches have ready to ship on their Etsy store. So that is the first one. The next fabric that I purchased was for mine and Evelyn's project that we're going to be starting and that is the Butter Believe It. So Evelyn kindly bought this for my birthday and she also has it and we're going to be starting this in August and we thought why not make a project bag for it and why not make it the same. So we're also going to have matching bags and this is the fabric i'll just get it the right way up is it that way this is the fabric that we purchased look how amazing that is it is gorgeous it is just perfect so this is from glamour secrets over on instagram not instagram etsy and to go with this fabric we bought this other fabric from stitching polster wares so we bought this beautiful pink polka dot so this is going to be the inside and this is going to be the outside and they work so well together so I'm really excited to make that bag for that project which we are going to be starting in August. Now for this project I am thinking of using the same fabric that I am going to be using for the Give Greatly design and so if I just get a few of the colours so you can see and I've dropped one but I'm hoping that they are going to pop quite nicely on this fabric. I think they will. I 
think that works. I really like the idea of having it like an opalescent fabric just to make it even more special and sparkly. So yeah, really excited to start that with Evelyn. So that is that one. Then the next fabric I bought was from Joanna Crafts, I think that's how you say it. And again, this is from Etsy, all the fabric except one is from Etsy and I bought this love design and I just thought that this would be perfect for any kind of Valentine's Day kind of projects or anything really that's quite close to my heart that kind of thing and I just thought that it was just beautiful fabric perfect for a project bag so that is the other fabric and then the last fabric I got from Amazon and this is actually quite a big piece very much reminds me of the sewing bee and you'll see why because it has one of these little dressmaker things on it so it has like a sewing machine and all sorts of um, it does actually have stitching on here as well you can hear this little stitching thing here so yeah this is the last fabric that I bought and yeah there's a lot of this fabric so I'm gonna be busy making project bags guys <laughs> so that is all my fabric and then the last things that I purchased was from the Nimble Thimble and I bought this which is the Twin Peak Snowman 2021 he is just amazing. Look how amazing he is. I just fell in love with this design as soon as I saw it and just thought it was so cute. It is quite a big piece, I think. What's amazing about this is actually a booklet as well. The whole design is in the booklet. So this is um, 147 by 151. So 147 wide by 151 stitches so it's reasonably sized I haven't bought any fabric or anything for this yet I haven't kitted it up but I really fell in love with it as soon as I saw it so that is that one and then the last one I have missed oh there they are the last one has been on my list for quite some time and that is Puntini Puntini and that is Cat Lovers and this one comes with these little buttons and a little pin it actually has three two buttons in there so these are the little buttons and the little pin and they go as you can see on the design i'm not sure how i would finish this um i i'm not sure if i'd finish it like that because i'm not that skilled <laughs> Uh, so I'm not sure how I'd finish it and I don't know when I, I'm not sure when I'm going to be starting it but when I saw that they had it over at the Nimble Thimble I thought I'd grab it. Another thing that I wanted to mention, if you are in the UK and you are a fan of Autumn Lane Stitchery and you like the idea of having a hard copy, the Nimble Thimble do have quite a lot in stock, it's just not on their website. So if you are looking for a pattern, it is always worth emailing Chris over at the Nimble Thimble because she sent across a huge list of Autumn Lane Stitchery uh, patterns and she is gonna actually gonna be holding one for me because I am also after the Puntini Puntini Autumn design, which is supposed to be coming in soon. So. So yeah, it's also, it's always worth emailing to find out if they have any others in stock um, because yeah, there was a huge list of Autumn Lane Stitchery items and I've never stitched an Autumn Lane Stitchery uh, design. I just love their designs and I really want to get my hands on a hard copy because I like how they incorporate the design into the, the pattern. So yeah, I really just want to experience that and have it in my hands. So um, I am looking to buy the Love Grows here. I have shared that here before. Um, 
in one of my previous videos and uh, yeah, I'm looking to now purchase it. Don't know when I'll start it, but I just wanna get my hands on it. So that is all of my haul. So then I'm gonna move on to giveaways. So as I mentioned, I hit 2000 subscribers here on YouTube, which is amazing. And I think there's like 80 more of you who have subscribed um, since then. So welcome, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for hitting that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. And to celebrate that and to give back to you guys for all of the love and support that you give to me, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. And I, I've been thinking about this for some time now and I really wanna make sure that you all get the chance to enter wherever you are and not worry about postal issues. So the two giveaways that I'm gonna be doing are going to be PDF giveaways. So that means that all you need is an email address to enter. So the first one that I'm gonna be uh, giving away is by Crosetta Gogo and it is the Belief in Christmas. So it's the project that I am also uh, stitching so I thought with it being Jog July, it's only right to give away a Christmas design. So yeah, all you need to do if you want to be in the chance of um, winning the Believe in Christmas by Chrisetta Gogo is write the word Christmas in your comment below and be a subscriber to the channel, like the video and um, yeah, you'll be entered into the giveaway. Now, for those of you who maybe don't celebrate Christmas, I thought I would do another PDF giveaway, but not Christmas related. So this one, so the next one is by Caterpillar Cross Stitch and it is their new release and it is the Collider Quilt. I think that's how you say it. The Collider Quilt, I love this piece. It is very different for them. And I think this kind of style, this quilt, design is really becoming really popular and I can see why because it really is beautiful. So if you want to be in a chance to win this design, again, make sure you're a subscriber, like the video and the word to add to your comment is quilt. So you can enter both, just put both the, the, the words into your comment, but obviously you'll only be able to win one of them and I will be drawing the winner in, let's see, I'm going to give it until the 15th of August. So I'll draw the winner on the 15th of August so make sure that your comments are in by the 15th and then I'll draw the winner and I'll reach out to the winner. I'm not sure if I'll, if I'll have a floss you before then um, but I will also let you know in my next FlossTube who won, but I will contact you on your comments, so make sure to have your notifications turned on so that you can see the comments that I give back to you if you are successful. So yeah, just quickly over on that again. So if you wanna be entered into the Believe in Christmas design by Chrisetta Gogo, just add the word Christmas. And if you want to be entered into the giveaway for the Caterpillar Cross Stitch Collider Quilt, then just add the word quilt and make sure you add it, add your comment before the 15th of August. So good luck to everyone. And um, yeah, I hope you like them designs that I have chosen to give away. Um, I love them, so I thought I would add them. Okay, so the last section of this video is going to be Q&A. So I had some questions on one of my videos and I had so many that I have split it out into the next couple of episodes. And the first one is by Helen Walker. And she said, I love Randall Designs and there are so many to choose from. How do you decide which to buy and stitch? This is a really, really good question and it really did get me thinking. I think for me, I stitch things that I can relate to or mean something to me um, when it comes to the Boffy Threads Rendell Designs kits. So for instance, I love birds, I feed birds and birds, I have a real soft spot for birds, which is why I stitched the uh, Sweet Tweet. I have rabbits, so which is why I stitch bath time and bath time very much reminds me of one of my rabbits. 
I really enjoy feeding ducks. I love ducks. Um, I look out for ducks whenever I'm walking near a, a like a lake or whatever. And I always used to feed them. So that's why I tend to gravitate towards the duck designs. Like I mentioned earlier, I very much am a lover of hedgehogs. I have the hedgehog Rendell design um, teddy bear. And I quite, I get involved with hedgehogs in that I feed them. Obviously rescued one, um, one hibernated with me. So I really like the hedgehog designs as well. So potentially I'm gonna be stitching one of the hedgehog designs maybe next year. Um, I also have squirrels that come to the garden now, so I tend to uh, feed squirrels, so I really gravitate to the squirrel ones. So that's kind of how I select the, the, the designs that I really like. It tends to be something that I can relate to or means something to me. So that's how I decide to stitch them. Or if it's really, really super cute and I really like it, I'll just stitch it as well. So yeah, I think with when you have a designer that has so many, and you really don't know how to pick which one because they're all so, so beautiful. I think if you can relate your project to an animal, so if you have a really special uh, memory of a pig or a cow or something like that, I think it's always, um, that's how I kind of gravitate to which one I'm gonna, do, which one I'm gonna pick. The next question is by Messy Mia, and they ask, how many times a week do you actually stitch on your project? So I try to stitch every day. That doesn't always happen. I would say I stitch roughly or like minimum four times a week. Um, and sometimes that can equal hours. If I sit down on a weekend, on a Saturday weekend, I can stitch for hours and hours and hours. Then other times I can stitch for 10 minutes and then my cat decides to come in, snuggle into me and I can't stitch in hand. I can't hold my stitch in, so I just put my stitching down. Sometimes I can stitch for an hour in the evening, it really depends, but yeah. I try to stitch every day, whether that be 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, but it doesn't always happen. Um, especially at the moment, work is so busy that I'm working long hours. So sometimes at the end of the day, I just don't feel like doing anything. Um, so I do try to stitch every day, but I would say minimum four times a week. I do miss some days. So if I have my diary here, I can tell you how many, how many times I stitch this week. So this week I have stitched every day other than Wednesday and Saturday. So I'm hoping to stitch today. Um, so yeah, I would have stitched five days out of the seven. And then in terms of how many times I stitch kind of on a project, it really varies. I did try and do a, a three day rotation, which worked really well. Um, but recently I've been spending like a week on a project and I've really found that that's made me make really good progress on my projects. It does mean that I don't stitch on as much throughout the month. It tends to be only about four projects a month, but I have been really enjoying that. So I may continue to do that. Um, so yeah, it tends to be a week at the moment but I was doing a three-day rotation as well which I did really enjoy as well I find minimum of three days I get quite a lot of progress on my projects so um, yeah hope that's answered the question and then the next question is by Roscoe Rabbit and this is the last question I'm going to be doing in this episode and that is most useful cross stitch accessory and why has to be the Lowry stand, 100%. Um, and I suppose the Q-snap as well, a Q-snap accessory, but I think for me, the Lowry stand, as I've mentioned previously, my wrists are not great. And the Lowry stand allows me to stitch for a long time. And it also allows me to, to carry on stitching. I think if it wasn't for the Lowry stand, not sure if I'd be able to stitch as much as I do. I think I'd have to give my wrists quite a lot of, um, recovery time, I suppose you could call it. So the Lowry stand really does allow me to stitch every day if I wanted. 
it allows me to stitch for a long time and so yeah the Larry Stan has really kind of changed the game for me I bought it was it 2020 no bought it in 2019 I think I think it was about 90 pounds I bought it from eBay um someone bought it and it was they'd never used it and they were selling it on eBay for 90 pounds and it was the best thing I have ever ever spent I am actually on the lookout for another stand though I I'm looking for a stand that I can use in bed. Um, I'm finding using the Larry stand a bit of a pain because it is quite bulky. Um, I'm traipsing up and down the stairs and having it next to me in bed. It's just not really um, ideal. So I am looking for like a wooden type of frame that will hold a Q-snap. So if anyone does have any suggestions on that, um, that would be perfect for kind of sitting with in bed let me know in the comments because I am really interested in buying one um, I think that is definitely something that I'm kind of missing in my kind of stitching at the moment so yeah let me know if you have any suggestions that you're maybe um, that you maybe have that you work with and you really enjoy I do quite like the idea of something that's quite adjustable so I can really get it to kind of sit exactly how I want uh, so yeah, let me know if you have any suggestions on that. So they are all the questions I'm going to be answering in this episode. So thank you very much for the questions. I really appreciate it. And that is everything from me. I feel like that was actually quite a quick video for everything I have to show. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your July. If you are taking part in Jolly July, I hope you are enjoying it. It is really fun to be stitching on Christmas items. Although I haven't really got that much, but... Um, but the ones I am stitching on, I am really enjoying stitching ready for kind of the Christmas period. And yeah, for, that's it from me. I hope you're all well and I will see you in the next one. Bye.